So one. please welcome yeah. Keegan and Patty. We're gonna have an awesome time. We can watch the snow and eat some amazing 60s awesome. food. Thanks, Aaron. Thank you, Aaron. Hi, everyone. Oh, uh, thank you well, so much for coming. This like, is awesome. I know, I know, especially with the snow. I really appreciate you guys coming out tonight. So who remembers the 60s? <laughs> <Three questions. laughs> I know, right? It kind of is. Well, we're going to take a trip down memory lane tonight. We're going to have some fun talking about some really great food, some of it. <laughs> A little questionable sometimes. Yeah, there's a couple <laughs> things in there that you just kind of go, what were they thinking? So Is let's it, get started. We're going to talk about all kinds of stuff going on in the 60s. It was a pretty exciting decade. There was a lot happening. These are from Ann Arbor. So I went I, to the archives of the library. They're such heroes, and they digitized years, decades, and decades of newspapers, um, including the Ann Arbor News. So these are pictures from the library old news site. And um, yeah, so there's the Ann Arbor Transportation. Yeah, I was going to say, bus. you can see the logo yep. right there. And my husband works for them, and I was like, look at your old bus. So. <laughs> Is this anybody's first desserts by the decades? You're, oh, thank you for coming. Um, yeah. We've, this is like our, we started in the 20s. 20s, so this is the fifth, fourth yeah. one? Yeah, and the, like, if it's I can just count. been so amazingly fun. It's been, so. It has, it's been a lot of fun. All right, so going on, there's still lots. You can recognize some of these buildings. That's lots. the JFK Peace Corps. And then we've got protests, and I think this is just that's carousing. The pretzel bell. Oh, that's, that's the, the pretzel, pretzel bell. bell somebody got it. taking their 21st birthday drink. Nice. All right. Then we've got the original art fair, right? Look at it. How funny I know, is that? Look at it. <laughs> <So> <laughs> I just, I, so yeah, small. it's hysterical because I, I can't really tell where that corner is, but I think I know. Is it South U? That's what, that's, yeah, that's, that's what I you. thought. Yeah, because I could kind of tell from the, the, this, this corner building right there kind of gave it away for me. Yeah. Isn't that amazing? The people are so happy not knowing. Yeah. <laughs> this is the library. I thought this was so cool. This is a downtown library with card catalogs that I grew up with. I'm a high school teacher in Ipsy, and the students, they do not understand before Google that's what it was. And they look at you like, what? what? <laughs> like, yeah, you had to go to the thing. <laughs> you had to go to the card cat and hope that nobody else had that drawer that you needed. Right. Right? Because right. then you had to wait for them to return the drawer and then find what you needed to. And hopefully they didn't, like, leave it somewhere else. Just, like, pull what they needed. I can't tell you how many times I was doing research on something. They, they couldn't find the drawer. They'd go walking around and, oh, it was on a shelf over here. Like, why was it not? I don't understand. Yeah. But we love the library. That was the Loving Branch. If folks remember that. Oh, I know. Yeah. I never saw it, but it's so nice. Yeah. You've got to love the library. I know. Look at it. And that's an, I love that picture over there on the left. I think that's when I think of, like, whatever, hippie culture, whatever. I just love that. The guitar. <laughs> I like the guy kind of the bare feet. And then that's a uh, book fair. More of our library in the 1960s. Awesome stuff. And then we get into some food. And it really was, it, it was some pretty good food. And I think you're going to be shocked at the amount of things that debuted in the 60s. Maybe not. And then we've got some really regrettable <laughs> the food. End. We saved that for the end. We, we did because it's, it is, it's kind of fun. Mm -hmm. So the 60s were really the advent of backyard barbecues and cocktail parties. Those were the two main ways that people entertained in the 60s were cocktail parties and backyard barbecues. So these are the most popular drinks in the 60s. Was the highball or whiskey sour, a Manhattan old fashioned, which is my favorite drink. Yeah, those are good. And then a Cuba Libre, which nowadays they just call it rum and coke. <laughs> but that's, what it, that's how it debuted was a Cuba Lube, I'm probably mispronouncing it, but, and, and there was, I had a talk a while back on the difference between barbecue and a grill and cooking out, and really what they were doing in the 60s was a, they were was cooking grown, out. Yeah. It wasn't a true barbecue, like in the, a southern mm -hmm. barbecue, and southern barbecues have been around for centuries, so they've just been around forever, but really that's what it was, and what I really like is the the lunchbox or like briefcase, the, this, this tartan, this, you know, Scottish tartan there. And those are some really big, I can't tell if they're steaks or burgers, misshapen burgers, but you know. Chicken. Oh, it's chicken. Got it. I couldn't really tell because of the, 
maybe the color of the picture. So, yeah. That might be like a little retouched. Yeah. Yeah, so. a little bit. A <laughs> little bit. Um, coffee rich. Oh. Stuff. No. Heck, just go with cream. Cream in your coffee. But it's, you know, and the other thing I thought was hysterical was ketchup packets. Mm -hmm. They, yeah. <laughs> and I saw there's, I saw a video during the research on this. There's a video of ketchup packets in Australia and how much better they are. And they actually, it's, a, it's like a little piece of plastic that's got two angled um, pieces in it. And you break it open so that it, you can open the whole thing. And then it squeezes all of the ketchup out. Is it vacuum sealed? Like yeah, it's ah. but it, so it has a top like it's a okay. like your dip like you could either open it to dip or you could squeeze it to go out. So, but the ketchup packet hasn't changed, like at all. No, <laughs> you still can't get the ketchup out, and it still goes all the way down the side, right? And, and then you can get it out, and all comes out. Yeah, right. exactly. It's right. either all or nothing. Yeah. But, you know, I, oh, I thought it was interesting. Granny Smith apples were introduced. I just thought they were like kind of eternal and they were always here. They, I, and I actually did some research. That's one of the most fun things about doing this is all the research we get to do. Um, and yeah, Granny Smith, I, I double and triple checked it. They were introduced to the United States then. It's like, really? They yeah, Granny Smith. Forever. That's that's like the quintessential American apple now, right? Yeah. And then a little bit familiar there, Domino's Pizza opened um, and Hardee's, which was my favorite when I was growing up, I loved Hardee's. And I've had them now, and it's like, it's not that good. Yeah, they're not, oh, they're they not the same. They did something, I know. Yeah, they're not <laughs> the same. And what's interesting is this, this was in 1960. So, and it was in South Carolina that Hardee's opened. And pay attention to that, because you'll see something else in a minute about Hardee's. Um, oh, aluminum cans used for food. This was the first time, because before they were tin. So this is the moving away from the tin and moving into more mainstream metals. Because has anybody gone, this is kind of an offshoot, on the Hoover Dam tour? Right? As you go through the tour, they talk about this new, just awesome metal that they have decorating most of the Hoover Dam is aluminum. So it was the coolest thing. So that they've got, they're moving away from the older metals, the things that, they're, that they've used over and over and over, like tin, and going into more modern metals. And aluminum was considered a modern metal. Um, <laughs> how do you not love instant mashed potatoes? Very easily. <laughs> yeah. I actually have a cousin that when she was a kid, she would sit with a, bo with a spoon and a box of instant mashed potatoes. I, that's my reaction. Like, really? How do you, dry. That's interesting. I had a friend in my neighborhood who used to take potatoes and eat them like apples. I'll, I'll do that with See, a potato. I would do that before I would do that, but I've never, I was like, okay. Yeah. So. yeah. I do that with onions. <laughs> brave. You're brave. Yeah. <laughs> Couldn't do it. Couldn't do it. Um, I, I, I also want to know who's in the Agricultural Hall of Fame. Who I want to know. Eli Whitney. Probably. Oh, yeah. 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 And Little Debbie Oatmeal Pies. Yes. I think they're still 49 cents. Yes. Yeah, I think, awesome. yeah, I, they're just amazing. And it was kind of sad to read the last meatpacking house in Chicago closed. Probably for very good reason. <laughs> But we'll get to that also later in the 60s as well. And then the Hawaiian Pineapple Company is renamed Dole. So it's the same company. They just changed names. And historic, historic sit-in at Woolworths. If you're on social media, a lot of pictures. Uh, Google did a Google Doodle. They about did. It. There's actually a miniature museum. So um, we're here, here, right, please. Uh, and so that's been coming up. Extremely important. Um, they have bravery I could never in a million yeah. years have. I, it was, I'm, it I'm, was amazing. I like to think I'm a badass, and I'm nowhere near. <laughs> <laughs> Not even close. <laughs> well, you are with that bandana on. Thank you. Bandana. Party giant. Yeah. I went to the party giant last yep. night. Okay, so I'm sorry. This is me. This is my slide. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, not sorry. I loved Fruit Strike gum as a kid. The flavor lasts about three and a half seconds. I was going to go five. I, <laughs> we'll go like four and a quarter. Like, I loved Fruit Stripe gum. I thought it was, I don't, something about the different, I just, I loved it when I saw this. 
and then I Googled it and I saw they have little characters. So each stripe had its own plush character yeah. that you could have bought as a stuffed animal. So I just want to give it up to this fruit stripe gum. You're going on eBay next, aren't you? I, probably. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I think it's five seconds for each of the five flavors, exactly. like a second it's for a each second one. Each one yeah. yeah. But you know, come on, man. Fruit, yeah. Look at it. Look well, and happened. Beach Nut Gum has been around. They have other mm -hmm. flavors, the clove, and I don't remember the rest of them, but Beach Nut's been around for it's a really long back. time. Yeah. It's coming back. So, so frozen foods are still becoming more and more prevalent. So if you were here with us for the 50s, you saw that grocery stores were becoming much more um, widely accepted across the country. More and more are popping up everywhere. And they had to fill the shelves with something. And um, the boiling bag frozen meals. I can't tell you how many of those things I ate. That yeah. was how my mom cooked. Yeah, me too. Bless her, yeah. ever love and pea thick and hard. <laughs> she couldn't boil water. She really, that's about what, yeah. yeah, that was about it. Yeah, it was a boiling bag, shake and bake, and instant mashed potatoes. That was, yeah. Yep. Um, Teflon frying pans were developed and, and introduced, which we now know was not the best thing ever. Yeah, not a good idea. And Frito-Lay was the Frito company and then the Lay company, and they joined to become Frito-Lay. Hey. And they, like, dominated ever since then. Because mm -hmm. Lay's potato, Lay's potato yeah. chips. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's them. And then notice this is 61. So last year, Hardee's was introduced as a restaurant, and a year later, they have their first franchise. Their charcoal broiled hamburgers. I mean, that's pretty quick that's, turnaround yeah. for a franchise. Mm -hmm. um, and franchises are, I mean, I'm sure it's not as expensive then as it is now, but I have to imagine that there's still a pretty penny to buy into a franchise then. Oh, yeah. Yeah, which I thought that was pretty interesting that only the, a year's time span, if a full year. Were they in war at that time, too? That I don't know. That's a good question. Yeah, I'm Like not fast sure. food wars? That it could be like a whole presentation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, could be. Yeah. <laughs> I want to ask because you know I grew up in South Carolina in the early '70s until I was six, and um, we knew Hardee's as a South Carolina thing, but also for for their, if I'm if I hope I'm not mistaken, but I, I thought it was also known for fried chicken. That actually rings a bell. That it sounds familiar, but I don't know for sure. We have to do a, fa a, a decades for the fast food. Wouldn't well, that that's, awesome? the, that's next month. That's the next one. Yeah, that's <laughs> oh, next the month, 70s, 70s. Gonna be, yeah. It's going to be lit. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah, it may be. I'm not sure. All right. Oh, look, went too fast on that one. Let me back up. There we are. Okay. Ices. Right? Who doesn't They're love an icy? I was so excited to see this. Get a glob of your favorite flavor, icy. I know, right? <laughs> and Mrs. Butterworth's. I, like to this day, I still have Mrs. Butterworth syrup. I, I know it's not real maple syrup, and I don't care. The Del Rio, if anybody went to the Del Rio, they had a Mrs. Butterworth bottle. And if you asked to do a shot, you had, like, if you're like, oh, I want to do a shot, they'd be like, yeah, you're doing a shot. I never actually experienced this, but when I was researching the history book, that was, people were talking about that. Of that, like, Mrs. Butterworth. You had to do, do a shot, shot of, of Mrs. Butterworth. Butterworth. Oh, it's I like could you do were that. being, like, you know, like, like a jerk and like, oh, hey, I want to do a shot of that. They would make you do a shot. I could totally do that with no problem. I could too. Syrup is delicious. <laughs> Zero issue. Um, and then the pilot food stamp program, which, again, we think is something older, but it was just a pilot here in the, it's mm -hmm. 62. So, again, keep that in mind. Mm hmm um, the art of French cooking, Julia Child. Life and cereal. Life cereal. And I know what you're all thinking. Key! He did not die right? from Pop Rocks and Coke. That was like one of my favorite <laughs> urban legends ever was that the Mikey kid had Pop Rocks and Coke and his head exploded. I'm like, really? Who thought of that? <laughs> like, yeah. And we all know what goes after, hey, Mikey. He likes, he likes it. it. Yeah, it's like, I think everyone... <laughs> yeah, he hates everything. Right. He Mike, he likes it. It's stuff. It's amazing, and it is actually a pretty good cereal. Mm, it's not bad. Um, Sorry. We're notice you're going to notice some other things about cereals coming along too. And we mentioned this back in the '50s that there were two of them that the sugar content was like 46 percent. Oh, yeah. I remember that. 
Yeah. Yeah. So bear that in mind as we're looking at some of these and some of the foods that we're going into next. Mm. Coffee mate. Coffee mate. So we had the, the coffee rich. Now we have coffee mate. And what I think is hysterical about the ad is it's America's, the secret of the most delicious American coffee. <laughs> well, and if those of you who know, um, it, it is. My, girl, my girlfriend is Scottish and she grew up in Scotland and she remembers a lot of their ads geared towards this is how it's done in America. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they do. They a lot of the ads, um, and you'll there's another thing in, in Britain later on, but you'll see that. And then the total cereal. So there's there's a distinct difference between adult cereals mm -hmm. and kid cereals, and we'll see that mm -hmm. as we go through this. The Jolly Green Giant, <laughs> right? So he was in, he came along in the fifties. And then we've got the, the boiling bags, essentially. Mm -hmm. Lima beans. In butter like, sauce. Can't do lima beans. I, I'm, I'm good with the peas, corn, green beans, but can't do the lima I, beans. I don't like this butter sauce, because I don't think it was real butter. Here. Probably not. I think it was fake butter. Probably not. I don't. Remember the one? But look at the thing I think is gross, uh, the butter sauce notwithstanding, the hard-boiled <laughs> eggs. <laughs> right? Right? <laughs> Who puts hard-boiled eggs on peas? <laughs> Who thought of that? Really? I've yeah, never... Tomatoes, is I it know, cold? That's a weird, too. Are the, are the peas cold or are the peas warm? I've never seen that. Yeah. That's so funny to me. I like me. the tomatoes, too, on the corn. That's a little more normal, but I just never thought of doing that. Yeah. But. It's Sprite started. So in the 50s, they had the 7-Up parties. And oh, 7-Up seven seven was everywhere in the seven 50s. 7-Up was a, there was a cookbook. There was cakes. There was all this stuff. And the, what is it? The Coca-Cola company's like, yeah, we got to get in on that. And yep. then Sprite, which I never knew they were two different things growing up. I thought it was like the same thing. I had no idea because they tasted the same to me. So They, they kind of are. are. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, um, oh, we are at 62. The pull Keep tab. Who crazy. remembers the pull tabs? My on, dad's beer, the Schlitz, right? yeah. <laughs> on, on, the, on the juice cans that never all the way comes mm -hmm. off. With the three Ever. oranges on it, yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah, and you slice your thumb because they're so sharp on them. Yeah, those were horrible. They were just <laughs> terrible. And then you couldn't really drink out of the cans either because the, the opening was too narrow at the top, so you couldn't get air in, so it, you had to blurg it. Like, it was like, who <laughs> thought of that? These people, 1962. Yeah. <laughs> See, so the the boiling bags for the Jolly Green Giant probably had the powdered, powdered butter. butter. I'm telling you, that's what it was. Why would you need to powder butter? I think this is the slideshow with the giant butter so cow in it. I think. Because it's, <gasps> it's space. Got She's it. She's right. You're you exactly right. Yeah, <laughs> it would last that's, forever. That's true. That's true. Yep. Yep, that's it. And, and who remembers the Twilight Zone, right? I love the Twilight Zone. And, and this was the episode the, to serve man where they didn't, you know, it wasn't how you thought they were going to serve man. I'm sure that counts as a dessert. Yeah. We don't want to spoil yeah. the ending for you guys. We won't yeah. give you the twist. It's like a new age of technology where it was like so cool to have all this food that was so processed, but it was also for a couple of things. I mean, you know, I wasn't alive at this point, but you know, I remember our school teachers telling us they had to worry about two things. The Cold War, so the Russians mm -hmm. might invade. I mean, they actually, I didn't know this, but they, until she told us, they did drills for, you know, like go under the desk, like a, oh, yeah. under a desk. Your desk. So they had to, and people actually did did build like underground oh, yeah. shelters with like all oh, yeah. The government actually supplied you with plans. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, there were there were plans that you could get free from the government on how to build one. Absolutely, and then what food to stock in it, right. and how to it keep, like, water all of it. Yeah. yeah, and like hard tack biscuits. My, I taught in Detroit. My school in Detroit was built in 1919, and the floor I taught on was the bomb shelter, and it really had nothing. It was just a hallway, and I was like, 
people, it would have been a madhouse. No one would have survived. I mean, people would have crammed <laughs> in there. They were like, I mean, you yeah. even, like, there was nothing. There was nothing, just the nope. hallway. I'll but the powdered it. butter also speaks to something else. So back in the, you know, between the 40s and 50s, we we're past the war, some industrialization has come along, we've got lots of really fun gadgets now in the kitchen because they've all been pretty much invented at this point. So you'll also see in this with the powdered butter is a move away from cooking. Mm -hmm. It's and you'll, you'll see that a bit more as we go through this. Wait till the 80s, oh my God. I can't, I know. there we go. I'm right. having issues go. with my Okay, thingy. what is that cover, Keegan? <laughs> Isn't that awesome? <laughs> what is so that, that is the first edition of The Joy of Cooking. That's fantastic. According to my research, it was the first edition book cover. And, and I thought that's, because that's 20s is when the book came out. And, and I think it's great that she's either it's a broom or a magic wand <laughs> or slaying both. a dragon. With her purse. With her, yeah, with her purse. <laughs> like, I thought that was, the, I think it's a beautiful book cover. It's gorgeous. Um, and I just thought, I, you know, the joy of cooking, you have to, it's such a ubiquitous, I mean, it's just everywhere now. So I thought to pay homage, mm -hmm. we had to do that. It's um, a good long life. And it is. It's, a, I th it's still around. Mm -hmm. But I thought I'd I have a couple put, copies. Yeah, yeah, I'd put up the, the original copy. And then Planer's Dry Roasted My Peanuts. My favorite. I, I love, love those, those things. so much. <laughs> just absolutely love those things. And apparently Mr. Peanut... Just passed away. He, they killed him. And then Saturday Night Live did a skit where they went to hell and he was in hell. It was kind of disturbing. Like, like it's what? Mr. Peanut. It's Mr. Peanut. Oh, there's a baby yeah. peanut. <sighs> got it. I missed that Sunday. Like baby, baby Yoda? Yeah. Got it. All right. Let's see if I can do this. There, there we go. There you go. Very important to mention United Farm Workers Union. There's, I got down a research rabbit hole on this. It is fascinating. I didn't know much about it. Uh, when you have free time after this, if you're sitting in traffic or something, maybe not then, but when you get home, look up about, so this blew my mind. So um, the grape pickers made less than a dollar an hour. I kind of expected something like that, but uh, a, lot of the, there, a lot of the ranches had nothing as far as sanitation and bathrooms, and none of them had any portable field toilets. Um, of course, housing was horrible, and this just got me. Some workers had to pay a quarter for a drink of water. While working, pick, that blew my mind. So thank God for finding that, that union yeah. definitely made things better and hopefully still does, but that blew my mind. Like, yeah, I, can't imagine. Was, I couldn't believe it when I read that either. I know, right? I was like, yep. what? I didn't really condense it because I had lots to say. Can I, can I oh. say that I actually saw her on, she's still alive. Yeah. That's awesome. Absolutely. That's amazing. There we go. Oh, here it is. <laughs> Damn. Right? It is horrible. It's still horrible. It's still out, too. If you is go it to really? This, I, I was somewhere, and I saw it, and I was like, you've got to. I thought it was a joke. I'm like, like for me, like someone was just entertained, like, what? Yeah. It is pretty bad. So, and then, speaking of bad. Yeah, <laughs> instant, well, instant coffee. Sorry. So now we've Can't got instant it. cream, and we've got instant coffee. And, and powdered, powdered butter, butter <laughs> right? And Weight Watchers. Because we're going to need Weight Watchers now. <laughs> and, and I think that this is really indicative, too. Again, we've, we've, we've been talking about food and access to food and how food is being moved around the country to your local grocery store, whereas before, you didn't, people grew their own. They raised their own food. You didn't go to the store to buy it. So I think this is where, as a society, we're realizing that we need to watch what we eat, and I think that's why she came up with the name Weight Watchers. That's just my supposition. But, yeah, I think that was, I think it's telling that it, it's in this decade that that happened. Because <laughs> And I remember the 16 chips. I remember that. Oh, I remember yeah. counting as a kid. Like, is it real? I remember doing that. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm a rule follower, and it was like, I want there to be 16 chips. I don't know what I did. Yeah, I think it's funny that they tell you how to say Fruit Loops in, in, pig, in Latin. pig Latin. <laughs> Remember, that was all the rage then, too, was speaking in Pig Latin. Why? <laughs> I never understood it, but it's hysterical. Be because, why yeah. not? Because you could. We were hiding under the desks. So right. Nothing else to do. So. 
So right, um, this is, you know, again, fruit is being moved around the country. So to control pests and to, con to keep things, you know, from um, insects and irradiation was used for the first time. Um, so that's kind of scary that our food has been irradiated for this many Six years. years. Um, I thought it was hysterical. First of all, how do you find out the sheep has a sunburn? But <laughs> I, I just never thought that was a thing. And, and wild carrots, are they out carousing the night before? Or, <laughs> But yeah, so it's just as opposed to a domesticated carrot. I, I didn't fully understand that one. But yeah, I thought that was interesting that wild carrots give sheep sunburn. Weird. And then who remembers Art Linkletter Show? The one billionth hamburger was served was on the Art Link Letter Show. Yeah. We didn't actually get a McDonald's where I live until like right the early 80s. That's not surprising. Oh. Yeah, that's not surprising. And you'll see why in a second. The thing I think is the best out of the entire 60s, yeah. and I swear this is the truth, John F. Kennedy says it. he declares himself a jelly donut. <laughs> I am not one kidding. little slip. One little, one little extra slip. syllable. Yep. So he's in Germany, he's in Berlin, and he's talking to the citizens. And it, towards the end of the, it was in Germany, yep, at the end of the speech, he says, Ich bin ein Berliner, which means I am a jelly donut. <laughs> what he meant to say was, Ich bin Berliner. He added the ein in there, and that three little letters <laughs> turned him into a jelly donut <laughs> instead of being a citizen of Berlin. So his intention was to say, I am a citizen of Berlin, but yeah, he didn't get that. And it didn't matter, because this is absolutely a case of not what you say, but how you say right. it. Right, it's exactly. People didn't care that he called himself no, a jelly donut. No, they delighted, yeah. They didn't care. It's awesome. Yeah, I think that is hysterical. It's probably my, my favorite fact Listen. of all time. Like, I love that. Probably because I love jelly donuts so I know. Much. Could be Bushkini's it. Booskini's coming yeah. up. Um, buffalo Wild Wings, or uh, probably not Wild Wings, but Buffalo Wings invented at a bar in New York. There, there have been some controversy originally about this, but no, the facts are pretty clear mm -hmm. that it was this, this anchor bar in New York, and much, much documentation has gone in to verify that, mm -hmm. yep, this is it. Mm -hmm. um, so St. Paul didn't get their first McDonald's until 60, where are we at, 64, so... McDonald's wasn't on every street corner like it is now. I mean, you can't go five miles almost without hitting McDonald's. Um, and that's not surprising because franchises are still a new thing. Mm -hmm. They're not as prevalent. Um, and I, maybe for the same reason that they're fairly expensive. Um, and then the Food Stack Act that was... The pilot earlier is finally fin ratified in a full-blown program now. And my absolute favorite when I was a kid, Pop-Tarts. Pop -tarts. The kids just told me that there's now pretzel Pop-Tarts, oh. which I'm like, that. So they're just like, Miss Smith, did you know there was pretzel? I'm like, yeah, I did not know that. Thank I, you, I don't know if I'd like a pretzel Pop-Tart. If it's salty enough, I could do it, but I, I don't know. See, I missed all this stuff at the this. Super Bowl. You got, I know, that's super cool. Yeah. But Pop-Tarts, uh, there was actually an article um, that credits or, you know, blames Pop-Tarts for the move away from sit-down breakfast. Because, yeah. again, if you think about it, we've got instant coffee, we've got instant cream, we've got powdered butter, we've got Pop-Tarts. Yeah. Instant we got breakfast. We got the total, yeah. So, and also, if you think what's going on, so the 50s, all the, the Industrial Revolution is going on, all the factories are built or are being built, people need to work them. So more and more people are entering the workforce, so there's not as much time for people to, to right. cook meals. So what manufacturers have done is they figure that out, and they've come up with instant food. So all the cereals, the Pop-Tarts, the instant beverages, so that I think one, there was one ad for Maxwell House that you know the, she, the, the <laughs> woman of the house didn't have to worry about having mm -hmm. a pot of coffee ready. Mm -hmm. For guests, she could whip up instant coffee. Like, it's so much better. It was, it's still awful. Yeah. Yeah. 
It's just me. Maybe if they added enough of the instant cream or yeah. instant <laughs> some butter, in butter that would do Throw it. Throw a Pop-Tart in there, yeah. some Fruit Loops. Yeah. It'll be fine. Okay, this is my favorite. This is the cheese I was talking about. 34, 000, almost 35,000 pounds of cheddar to make that for the 1965. It's not the World's Fair. It's, not, it's for the annual Wisconsin Dairymen and Cheesemakers Association. That is fantastic. America. That's all I have to say. America. Yeah. <laughs> we are awesome. And she's like the crown. She's like the queen. Yeah. 170,000 quarts of milk. It's impressive. Well, they probably used that roto. Remember in the. In the yes! <laughs> The, the milker. <laughs> the rotolactor machine that they had all the cows in. Remember that? We'll get to the 30s yeah. in a few yeah. decades. And <laughs> Look then at Diet that. Pepsi. Because we, we've had, you know, Tab, and we've got, so now we have to have Diet Pepsi. All the diet drinks coming out. Because Weight Watchers is, has come out, so now we're on a diet kick. You better have <laughs> Weight Watchers. Yeah. And then Cool Whip. Right? Everything had Cool Whip in the 60s, and especially in the 70s. Everything had Cool Whip. Mm -hmm. uh, e everything oh, 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 yep. Yep. had Cool Whip. And the fact that within three months it was the top whip selling, whipped products selling is amazing. Three months. That's amazing. I don't know how much it's changed. My guess is considerably. But it's Cool Whip. That stuff will stay. If you if it melts, if you've ever had the misfortune to have it melt, it's just this gelatinous. It's I couldn't eat it ever since there was a situation <laughs> where it was melted, and I was like, I can't ever eat this yeah. again. So the Ready Whip is really good because that's real cream. You can right. Just, so yeah, I love the the corned beef sandwich being smuggled on Gemini. Like right, like you can't. We talked about space in. You can't get a good corned beef sandwich in space, apparently. <laughs> so you just take one with you. I thought that was awesome. And then the first Subway sub shop. I, I'm almost positive that was awesome. Like, it's, that was probably awesome back then. And then mm -hmm. it just kind of, not that it's not, it's not horrible, but, you know. Yeah, it's, <laughs> Subway. it's, it's not a, it's not a yeah. real. Right. <laughs> Poppin' Fresh, <laughs> right? You remember Poppin' Fresh is awesome. And, and he, he has a whole family too. They all have names. There's like if you there, there's that blew my mind. They all have names that start with P, I think. Yeah. And there's like a mom and a dad and there's a baby and it's it's a great thing. And again, the crescent rolls. So now you don't have to make bread either. Mm -mm. You you see where we're going with food at this mm -hmm. point? Mm -mm. Now I ate me the I ate some spaghettios like you would not believe. Yes. I love those things. And even now like Jilly's son Rowan, he's thirteen. He'll he won't eat the can. I'll I'll eat it. You know, I still like spaghettios. I don't know what it is about spaghettios, but I think what's even funnier is that they're Franco-American spaghettios, yeah. not just spaghettios, right? The Franco-American's gone now from the label. Oh, yeah, it's just spaghettios now. Yeah, well, I, I thought that was them. funny, but you could save seven cents. <laughs> Right. Right, exactly. Forget about making your own tomatoes. Right. We'll just throw it all in the can. Yeah. And you can, like, eat it. Salt. I remember yeah. in college, people would, like, just eat it out of the can. Out of the can. I can. Yeah. I'm sure I can. Yeah. And Here how we can we forget Tang, right? Oh, that's Mrs. Brady. That is Mrs. Brady. America's yeah, mom, right there. Right? So. Here we are again with another instant product with lots of vitamin C, and this is going to space, right? Mm -hmm. There were several ads about with, with, and that's exactly what it was designed for, so that they could have the vitamin C. Yep. And most of the ads for this at this time actually showed the full spacesuit. So, like, this was it. You were going to space. You drank Tang. You were going, <laughs> going to space. To space. That was great. Um, but again, it's, it's the same thing. We've got instant coffee, instant breakfast, instant mm -hmm. orange juice. Everything's instant. Mm -hmm. And I just think it's hysterical that it's Florence Henderson. I know. She's so awesome. Rest her soul. That was great. Uh, that's why I'm glad my family loves the taste of Tang. <laughs> and I, for me, I couldn't do it. It was too powdery. That same here. I, we tried it once, and I remember just it was like that chalky kind of powdery. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> you have to let it set. Let it That's sit. probably what it was. Yeah. <laughs> Got it. Knowing me, I just dumped it in. Got it. Like, oh, yeah, man, that's I what I did. I just cold on? water tang yeah. drank it. Exactly. Like, what? This is disgusting. Yeah. Yeah. That blew my mind. Mississippi finally re repealed prohibition. I mean, obviously federal, you know, amendment, yeah. but I'm like, it really? Like, what were you doing? So, well, um, there are still counties still in Tennessee counties. that are still dry. We had one in Michigan until mm -hmm. uh, it, wherever Holland, this, whatever county that is, um, that was dry because the brewery, New Holland, could not sell their own beer on Sundays. Well, Jack Daniels can't sell yeah, their own alcohol. That blows my heart, America. Because that's, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I thought that was pretty interesting. And then ingredients are required now to be on the label. It, they don't, I don't think at this point they have to be in order of, you know, um, por, por, uh, yeah. proportions, right? So, like, now it is. So the first thing is the most, right. right? I don't think we're there yet with this. Just the fact that they're labeling everything is pretty amazing. Um, and then... The Pope said with Roman Catholics, and this affected me, we didn't have to eat fish on Fridays. We could have meat. We didn't. We still had fish sticks, <laughs> right? <laughs> Mrs. Paul's fish sticks and tater tots. And at lunch for school that day was a peanut butter and jelly sandwich or grilled cheese. Those were so nasty. <laughs> they were soggy, and they were just, I remember them being horrible. But, yeah, but we didn't have to, but we, we chose to. This, whatever this meat roll-up thing, mm. this is the beginning of the regrettable food. Yeah, there's more coming. <laughs> that yeah. is a something dish meat and vegetable. It's something fish. I think it does. Yeah. Oh, one dish. Okay. Yeah. Roll, it's, well, it's, there's bee, there's peas or something, there's it looks like. Is, with the soup. Yeah, a new, a new... Yeah, it look, I can see where you'd think it looked like catfish. It does. Yeah. It looks um, like codfish from here. Yep, a new, and vegetable and, and something. It looks like soap niblets. <laughs> soup. Yeah. Yeah. Soup, yes. Campbell's soup makes it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yum. Yeah, Campbell's on their condensed soups, right? Doritos. Yes. The original. Love me bag some Doritos. Doritos. Even Crunch and Munch, right? So I, Those are good. Munch, I loved Crunch and Munch. Much more than Cracker Jack, because Cracker Jack has molasses in it, and I don't care for the taste of molasses. But they did not have a prize. So you Well, kinda, right. And you gotta have the Cracker Jack prize. Right? Little tattoos, yeah. Yep. An instant oatmeal. Mm hmm Right? Add hot water, stir. Instant so true food. story, I didn't know oatmeal was like, I thought it was just that. Like, I didn't realize oatmeal was actually its own, like, because that's what I grew up with, was like, my mom would like, you know, take the little thing, pot of water, and just mm -hmm. put it over, and that was oatmeal to me. Right. I had no idea. Yeah, and with the instant oatmeal, they also had instant cream of wheat. Mm-hmm. And then there was cocoa wheat. Yes, yep. Um, and then even instant grits. So... I've never been a grit fan. That's not been my thing, but yeah. So again, we're we're instantizing mm -hmm. food. I, I think it's hysterical that they've got taco flavor. I know. <laughs> Anybody ever have a Dorito and think, mmm, this is a really good taco? <laughs> Pro probably not. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a lot. Gatorade. See, this fascinated me when I found out that it was made oh, yeah. for I had no, and there was a commercial about it, and they're like, mm -hmm. it's Gatorade. I'm like, what? Yeah, the Gators. Florida Gators. Yep. That was it. There they are, that's enjoying it. their Gator Aid. That fascinated that's me. It. Yep. That's it. Yep. So I had to share it with all of you. Like, that's so and, cool. and plastic milk jugs. Mm -hmm. Pretty much what, yeah. Yeah, because until this point, they were still, for mm -hmm. the most part, glass, glass bottles. Yeah. Yep. The, yeah, the p twin pines. Mm -hmm. Yeah. More butter. <laughs> we love butter. <laughs> we, we, have we, we do. With butter. We love butter. The other thing is because until now it was illegal in Wisconsin to have this. You you couldn't have margarine with the yellow packet. 
it was illegal. Or did I have that backwards? No, you, you could yeah. not. It was just, yeah, they don't really want you eating. I went to law school in Wisconsin, and they did not like you eating margarine. I don't eat it, but, like, they, they, they want you to eat butter. Right. Yep, absolutely. The Wholesome Meat Act was passed, which is probably why the meatpacking place in Chicago <laughs> closed. <laughs> And, and we, we touch on this in each one just to kind of see the where the farms, population yeah. is, but 200 million people in the U.S. That's a lot of people with 3.2 million farms. Mm -hmm. Thank God. Love our farms. 83% mm -hmm. um, of which have a telephone. We've been tracking that. If you've been coming to these, we've been tracking the electricity and the telephones. And tractor farms. versus horse. Yes. Oh, yeah. There was for a while, yep. there were more horses on, you yep. know. Yep. Yeah, I remember when that flip happened. Yep. And, and this was sad. The, the sheep in um, Skull Valley, Utah, um, from some nerve gas, um, some testing, um, 600 sheep, 6,000 sheep found dead. Yeah, that was, that was kind of sad. Maybe they had sunburn. <laughs> like the other from, ones, they ate the wild yeah, carrots. from the wild carrots. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the Big Mac is introduced. See, I thought it always was. Mm. I had no idea it was, I didn't nope, know Nope, the burger, the McDonald's burger was just that. Bun, meat, cheese, toppings, bun. It was, that was it. This was the first time they double stacked the meat. <laughs> which was, you know, right. And it is. Who remembers the jingle, right? It was the two, two all, all beef, beef patties, patties special sauce, sauce lettuce, cheese, cheese. Pickles, onions on a sesame seed bun. There you go, right? The special sauce is just Thousand Island dressing. Right. right. That's the like the Disappointing. the corporate secret. It's right. Thousand Island dressing. That's all it is. So yeah. I love Red Lobster. I'm not gonna lie. I love the biscuits. I love Red Lobster. Like almost every student I've ever had, Red Lobster is like their favorite restaurant. I think it's so adorable. So, but I do it like is. they had the cocktail lounge. It was kind of like very <laughs> 60s and the Neptune King of Seafood dinners. So, I wanted to give a shout out. To and Red I Lobster. hope the dinner isn't for three hundred and nineteen dollars. <laughs> I, I, right? I hope it's. That better yeah. be some fine I, 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 I assumed that's what it was. They were just missing the period after <laughs> the three, lady, but lady. just wanted to make sure. And as a kid, I loved Goober. Me too. This was like, the best. So yeah, good. that was awesome. To have my peanut butter and jelly yes. in one jar. It was, <laughs> I, I just needed it. one spoon. That yeah, was great. I eat it. <laughs> right? Great. Yeah, that was awesome. And then 911 yeah, is the first time 911 became the universal number for emergency services. And it started in all places, Alabama. <laughs> I, maybe I'm thinking alphabetical. Oh, okay. Alabama, yeah. Alabama. I mean, that's the only thing I could think of is why it would yeah. start in Al either there is because it was yeah. just alphabetically made sense. Yeah, thought that was kind of cool, though. 69 bottled canned beer outsells bottles. And canned beer is coming back. Yep, it is. Back. It's coming back. The first Wendy's opens. Mm. Pringles. I, right? I just because now that we have instant mashed potatoes, yeah. we can make instant potato yep. chips. I do like Pringles. There was a kid that came into one of the classes today, and I made him give me Pringles, and they were, <laughs> they were so good. They were like cheddar cheese and chive. They were so good. Yeah, they're, they're good. I like, I Sorry, like Pringles. Chef. The Galloping Gourmet, one of my favorite <laughs> shows, one of my all-time favorite shows. And check out that kitchen, right? That is yeah. a fully decked out you kitchen. You got the harvest gold. <laughs> right? It is. That's, that is like the great kitchen right there. Um, the, those 3.2 million farms that we have are using 32.2 million tons of fertilizer. Now, I hope some of that is just manure, because mm -hmm. that is classified as a fertilizer. So I'm, I'm hopeful that most of that is just manure. Um, but it didn't dive too far down that statistic and what that was, <laughs> but I hope so. Um, and this is the first time we see something banned. Um, I can't even pronounce that. Cyclamate. Cyclamate, mm -hmm. Cyclamate thank you. Um, because it's a non, you know, it's a non-caloric sweetener, and they were able to prove that it caused cancer. So we're seeing now, because at this point, nothing's been banned. So many things have been introduced, and we've got all these great new products and new, just awesome stuff. 
And this is the first time something is being say, well, wait a minute, we, maybe we don't need all this mm -hmm. stuff. And I thought that was really telling. And then the first color TV commercial in Britain was for bird's eye peas. With hard boiled eggs. Yep, with hard boiled eggs, yeah. It could have been. We're blaming them. Yeah, I'll blame Jilly when I get home. I'll ask her. Yeah, yeah. Okay, here it comes. Here we go. All right. So I don't even know what some of this is. I, that's like a fondue with eyes and a mustache and like really I just think it's fascinating they use some sort of gelatinous something to make like the fish and that one's smiling at you and it's sm it's looking at oh, yeah. you it's smiling and there's more hard boiled eggs which yep. apparently love the hard boiled oh, eggs lemons. I don't know we're gonna pretend they're hard boiled I think they're lemons both and isn't it? I love the hot dog thing. I that is something a hundred percent would make if I like if I cooked, which I don't. But like I, I love the hot dog thing, and there's some gelatinous mass in it. Yeah, and notice the rolls; those are all the you know those Parker hose frozen. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yep. Yeah, and you remember maybe it was just in the '70s, but going into someone's home and you knew they were like wealthy or well off if they had. Five or six molds, like the brass molds. Yes. Oh, copy yeah, up the copper molds of like fish or whatever, or like hanging thing, yeah. in their kitchen, right? <laughs> yeah, that's what made these things. So this this a caption I just noticed is Mr. Herbivorous is a vitamin or is a vitamin avorious. So right. this has lots of vitamins for you. Yeah, lot, lots of it's vitamins. It's cheese, but okay. It's yeah. terrible. Yeah. <laughs> And maybe I that's kale. That. This might be. I think that might be kale. It looks too curly to be spinach. Yeah. So I, I think the edges are, I don't know. But it's peppers. Yeah, I don't know peppers what the and, is and the eyes. I don't know. Eggs. Yeah. Anyway, are you ready for some more? This one's fun. Right? Yeah. How do you do this? <laughs> How do you bake that in there? Because if you look, there's, there's little, there's like. Yeah, like corn pieces and pea pieces. Oh, is that bread? Yeah, I it's bread. It's a piece and you have to like hollow it out and then you put the... That looks baked to me. I don't know. I think that's a store bread. It's stuff. What's, what's behind it? It almost looks like a pimento. That it, would be it does, way. kind of. I can't tell what this is back here. I know, what is it fit? Is I, I can't meat? tell. Maybe, um, yeah, because this looks like a tail. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> what is but yeah, that? I can't tell. Um, this is probably the single most disgusting thing I've ever seen. Banana. <laughs> it's bananas with ham and hollandaise sauce, as one does. I'm going to pass on that one. I'm not even going to go there. Like, how in the world did they come up with bananas and ham? Like, oh yeah, the hollandaise makes it upscale. It's the great right? American recipe card collection. From See, McCall's. Was, yeah, thanks McCall's. Right? Oh, it's gotta be a brunch dish, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and then planked spam. Spam is still around. Mm -hmm. We've traced the, the lineage oh, yeah. of spam, you and I, yeah. Yeah, so this is a plank of wood underneath here, and then they've got, <laughs> yeah. So, yep, it's on, some, it's on a piece of wood. And then they put the spam on it, and notice the grill marks, <laughs> right? And then the mashed potatoes around it. it. <laughs> they piped the mashed potatoes yeah. in there with the face. The instant, bag. right? They took the instant mashed potatoes. Oh my god! Yeah, and then a tomato, and then put some more in it. I mean, <laughs> oh, it could be a mushroom. Oh, that could, yeah, yeah, that could be a mushroom. Yeah. Oh, like they pipe the... Yeah, so the, yeah, mashed potatoes and then these four oh, are mushrooms. So that could be it, yeah. 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 They either, they still look pretty gross. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, they did it around and then they did a... You know. Yeah, Rounded and that's what that's called. Slices. Yeah. No, yeah. it's this cover with tomato slices, um, capped with large mushrooms, drowned in butter, bake 25 minutes, then ring with mashed potatoes and put back in the oven. Yeah. 
We're not really sure what this is. We don't know. These are pineapple chunks. It's a gelatinous. Yeah, with pineapples. Sure. <laughs> I don't like carrots uh, and jello, but that's yeah. cool. Yeah. That's cool. Oh, yeah. This is, I mean, and this is where I think it's just a stereo. These are like cocktail party items and dinner party things. People serve this to guests. So at, at my house, like every year we have a bad, a retro foods party. Y'all can come. And my friend made this jello mold with macaroni in it in a jello mold. And then she, in the center of it, she made a baked bean, um, like jello y thing. In the, and that was in the middle of it. And like, I ate, I did eat some. We all tried it. And it just tasted like nothing. It just, it was so bizarre. So yeah. I, for my part, I made a meatloaf train, like individual <laughs> little meat, meatloaf cars. And then I put mashed potatoes all around it. And then it was really cute. And they had like different wheels were like carrots. It was kind of cute. So, yeah. So you have come. fun with your food. Yes. Right? And I'll come to my house and have jello. So at this point, we've really, all of the, the appliances have been developed, right? So th we've already got the stove, we've already got the refrigerator, mm -hmm. we've got the dishwasher, we've got all the appliances the that go in the, in the kitchen. And now we're getting into gadgets coming into the kitchen. Smaller items that are supposedly going to make life easier, make cooking easier for all these instant things that you just have to boil water for. Right, so you don't need to cook anything, but you need gadgets for it. Um, and what I thought was really interesting was that the sous vide was reinvented or rediscovered. It was actually discovered back in 1780. Right, and that's that's like now that's a popular thing. Yeah. So sous vide, this this is the sous vide machine. So this houses a heating element that is in the water. And it gently heats the water. So you put, you know those boiling <laughs> bags that we talked about? You put the food in a boiling bag, in raw food in a boiling bag, and then in there and cook it slowly in the, in the water. water. And then the, the water, water has a pump on it that circulates the water and heats it as it goes around. And sous vide is like the in thing now. Yeah, it's very popular. Oh, yeah. If you don't have one of those, you can just use a hair dryer. <laughs> <laughs> Toss it in the water. You won't get electrocuted. Don't yeah. worry. No. Yeah. I remember when I was real little, my grandmother had this um, washing machine made by Maytag, and it had a ringer that was outside of the washing machine. And you had a tub on each yep. side, and that's mm -hmm. how she washed her clothes. Mm -hmm. That yeah. was in one of our, we had, we had that was in, in the, the 40s. 40s. Yeah, 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 that was in the 40s. Yeah. I'm not surprised. Yeah. But sous vide is now becoming a really, really popular thing. You can buy them now. Originally, they came out about five years ago. They were about $1,000. Mm. Not kidding. Now they're closer to, it's, it's much smaller, it's much more streamlined, um, and they're right about two to three hundred dollars. They do the same thing. <laughs> Bags. Yeah. So yeah. you get a vacuum sealer, you put like steak or your meal or whatever inside the suit in the plastic bag and you vacuum seal it and seal it shut and you set the temperature on the machine and it does the same thing. It circulates the water, heats it up, and then slowly cooks whatever's in that bag. And they say that it makes it much tender, it's much a better flavor, you can um, infuse things much faster with a sous vide. So the, I worked at a restaurant here in Ann Arbor that had six of them. The restaurant's closed. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah, you pay a lot more for any, if it's sous vide, it's, it's gonna be a, a, a premium price point on that. And then of course, pr the pressure cooker. And I guess I assume the pressure cooker had been around for a very long time. But the pressure cooker was, this was a new, it was just introduced in the 60s. For yeah. canning, that I know, changed. A, with the pressure lid on it, with the valve. Because I thought the same thing, because people have been canning for centuries, right? right? The water but bath. it was a water bath mm -hmm. canning. They didn't pressure can. There, there wasn't a way to have the gasket fully seal or a way for. Yeah. 
I, yeah. They, yeah. I, I'm scared of them. I'm like, I don't really. Yeah, it had to have been from the 60s. Yep, yeah, thought that was funny. And immersion blenders. So those are the stick blenders. Those are the handheld. And they've been widely used in Europe. And they're finally, after Emeril Lagasse and um, Alton Brown, were the two chefs that, celebrity chefs, that really started to repopularize that here. Um, and people started, oh, well, maybe we should make some of those. So now it's pretty, pretty common now here. But it wasn't back then. It was pretty much just in Europe. I know I can't live with mine either. I, love, I use it all the time. I love it. So I thought this was fun. So we've got all this regrettable food. We've got all these ideas and instant things. He, these are some sample menus from various magazines and cookbooks on how, what you should have to host a party. Um, chicken liver pate, which I'm um, oh, oh, OK. Mushroom stuffed eggs, oh, OK. Cocktail croquettes. I'm not sure if that was like tuna croquettes or, or those, that's the, the little weenies. Little like weenies. the those are good. Got it. Nice. Yeah. Like the, um, the uh, little the cocktail smokies. cocktail wieners. Yeah. And then the camembert amandine. I'm, I'm, I'm OK with that. I could do that. I like camembert. Grilled frankfurters on toasted rolls, raggedy and salad. I had to look that one up. You'll <laughs> see it in a second. Oh, okay. <laughs> Frozen fruit chunks and chocolate cake, because yeah, chocolate cake, yeah. right? Yeah. Bean and olive soup. For f football? I, I, eh. Black beans I could see, but not, like navy beans yeah. or great northerns or... Oh, good point. Probably not. Yeah. A ham and cheese hero. I assume they mean hero sandwich. <laughs> Super Otherwise, hero. I'm not really sure what they're talking about. A mustard burger. Maybe they just mean burger with mustard on well, it. Do they put powdered mustard in the meat? <laughs> Probably. I mean, that, could, that could happen. Yeah. Carrot and fennel sticks. I'm like, OK, I can, I'm done with that. That yeah. sounds pretty good. Beer and coffee. Instant coffee, coffee of course, <laughs> right? And I thought it was hysterical. This was from actually, a, um, I want to say it was a McCall's magazine that talked about the buffets and the Americanization of all of the, the cultural dishes to the point that they actually said, think lasagna with American cheese. Oh. Like, that just sounds so disgusting. Or Chinese ribs with ketchup. Ketchup. Mm. Yeah. Like, yeah, no, 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 no. I mean, those were the two specific examples they had on that one, but I thought that was really interesting to see. Because here, this, they tell you really clearly oh, yes. how to host a cocktail party or a backyard barbecue. And, and these are excerpts. I mean, I tried to glean some of the, the more <laughs> fun points out of this. Good advice. Right, lots of ashtrays yeah. everywhere. There, some of them, I collect old cookbooks, and sometimes they'd be like, you know, have like bowls of cigarettes. Like find out what your friends smoked and put out like bowls of cigarettes. Or put like place mm -hmm. like four cigarettes on their plate yeah. when they come in. Um, twice as many glasses as guests because they can't use the same glass apparently. <laughs> Not sure about that one. Topiary trees made from edibles. Oh, yeah, I did that once. So I got, for Christmas, I got like the green... Um, like styrofoam, and then you put the stuff on toothpicks. Okay, I'm with you, but marinated it? shrimp? Yeah, that's odd. I agree. I didn't put that. I put, I just put vegetables. <laughs> but yeah, that is weird. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, the backyard barbecue. Every, Hawaii was, and tropical fruits were all the rage in the 60s. I mean, this was mm -hmm. it. Anything that you could add some tropical right. fruit to, some sure. pineapple to, orange to even, you were golden. Um, build your own shish kebabs. What the heck is deviled beef? Hmm. Yeah, deviled eggs. <coughs> well, Maybe they're like, from the peas. I like, like deviled ham. Deviled ham. Yeah. That could be it. Yeah. Yeah, that could be it. Well, I remember, like, in the 90s, you could get the ra they, they were like, buy the ranch dressing powdered mix and put that in beef and make hamburgers with that. Yeah, I'm okay with that, but I wasn't really sure what deviled yeah. beef was. 
I like pineapple I was kind of scared of it, honestly. Pineapple on a spit. That smells kind of good. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, grilled pineapple is amazing. Yeah, it is really good. Grilled peaches are amazing. Mm -hmm. So, I'm, you know, for the most part, I'm with this. Um, I'm not really sure what a barbecued banana is. Mm -hmm. Grill the banana, I'll throw some sauce on it. Holiday I mean, sauce. I'm, bananas foster. Yeah, yeah, with the ham and hollandaise. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, so much fun with this food. Yeah, that's, um, it could have been bread. It could have been just me fat fingering it. Um, I like the creed, though. Yeah, I do, too. But that could have been me just, I don't type very well. Some of the iconic dishes, here's that raggedy <laughs> and salad. Oh, this thing? Yeah, yeah, oh, raggedy wow. and salad. Oh, that breaks my heart. Somebody made, you know some mom made that? Oh, yeah. Like, oh, God. Yep, how do you get, how do you get your kids to eat fruit? It was how that was. <gasps> Yeah, <laughs> right. Chicken Ella King. Mm -mm. Yeah, the uh, oh bento box. Yeah, that's hysterical. Yeah. Oh, I bet it is. The Swedish meatballs with grape jelly. Oh, those are good. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. They are. As long as they it's are. the IKEA meatballs. <laughs> The cocktail wieners, yeah. 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 Uh, no, it's chili. Yeah, chili sauce. Yeah. And then, of course, pigs in a blanket, chicken a la king. I ate my weight in chicken a la king when I was a kid. I mean, Grant, that was one of her favorite meals was to make that. Um, key lime pie was invented in Florida in 1965, I want to say it was. Um, and the Tunnel of Fudge, this was the Betty Crocker, no, it was the Pillsbury's Best winner that year um, of their Bake Off. And sure, why not? It looks delicious. Yeah, it looks really good. <laughs> Stuffed celery stu and uh, oh, with cherry tomatoes. Yeah, with cheese or peanut butter or whatever. You know, that's, yeah, pretty good. So we've got some recipes, and I think the recipes I got for you today were the raggedy and salad. Aww. Or maybe not, because that one's pretty self-explanatory. Yeah. Oh, meatballs. the Swedish meatballs. meatballs. The, tunnel of, the tunnel of fudge chocolate cake. And then the chicken a la king. Because those are, those are just good recipes. So um, next month. March 4th. March 4th, March we're going to be March. back for the 70s. Oh, we got to wear disco suits. I know, this one's going to be fun. I know, it's going to be fun. This so one's going to be a lot of fun. After, we have to wear roller skates. Yes, totally will. Yeah, no, I'll break no, my I neck. No, I know, me too. So, um, thank you so much thank for coming so tonight. Much. Oh, my God, Really guys. appreciate it, for especially if you go home you before so, the so snow much. comes. Thanks have to Ann Arbor great Library. Evening. Thanks for letting us do this Oh, awesomeness. and we've got some key lime pie for you. So, as we head to the back, we've got some key lime pie for everybody. Um, to enjoy on your way home. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.